G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and I'm in southern WA on the farm of Eliza and David James and they've taken over a lease block that's been set stocked for 50 years. They're trying some regenerative practices and they're using some innovative fence technology to achieve aims of regenerating their soil. G'day Eliza, how are you? Hey, Tim. Well, thank you. How are you going? Oh, awesome. Thank you very much for having us out today. No um, I'm actually really excited to be here, not only because it's WA and it's an amazingly different place for me, but also you're doing amazingly different things on leased property. Yes. How many hectares do you have here? About a thousand arable hectares. And when did you take over? Uh, 1st of February 22. Okay, so you're only about a year into this? Correct. Just over a year? Yes. Wow. And you're already kicking some goals, aren't you? Yeah, in a few different ways, for sure. Yeah. So can you explain to me a little bit about the property? What was the history of the property here? So we, uh, the previous leases had um, set stocked sheep for the past approximately 50 years. Okay. Uh, so when we took over, our monitoring showed that there was not a lot of ground cover uh, and less desirable pasture species such as Guilford grass, Cape weed, maybe some silver grass. But we did have like a benchmark of the creekways which were fenced off and not grazed. You had some creekways here. Yes. And when you went to have a look at those, because they'd been fenced off, because the property owner wanted that protected, Correct. you yes. found some really desirable grasses. Yes. And you thought that maybe there's the capacity for those to be re-established into these pastures. Because Guilford grass, not That's so good. Not so good. It's a real challenge on a thousand hectares to start cell grazing, isn't it? Which is effectively what you've been doing. Yes. Um, Gallagher have come in with a land care grant and supported you in this endeavor a little bit. Yes. yes. Um, so how much difference has that made? Uh, the world of difference actually. We, The paddocks are structured so there's a water point, a dam in each paddock yep so we've been able to divide the paddocks into smaller sections so this 50 50 hectare paddock was divided into 10 and 15 hectare sections off the dam and that meant that each section was grazed for a smaller amount of time but also allowed to have a longer recovery period for the next time so you've got this intensive period where you're getting all of this humic material put into the soil from the animals as yeah. it should be yeah. and then you're going off and you're leaving that for a few months to recover mm -hmm. and build up all those grass species have you noticed a change in the grasses i know you you spoke a lot about guilford grass and all of the other problem grasses that you had here cape weed all of that sort of stuff yeah it's only a year in. I wouldn't expect that you'd see much of a change. Have you seen anything? Yes, we have. Uh, so, like I said, the creekways held uh, a bank of different species. Uh, the one that we've, that's a good flagship for us or indicator has been Phalaris. Yep. Uh, we get excited about that because uh, you just don't see perennials in WA and yeah, right. lots of people say, oh, you can't grow perennials here. But it's here and it has come out into the paddocks where we've been grazing and recovering. So simply by changing grazing practice with the use of the Gallagher strip grazing fencing, the yes. good electric fencing, yeah. um, you've been able to, in one year, see a reintroduction of perennial grasses into your paddocks. Yes. And have you had to seed any of that? No. It's all been here? Yes. So with good practice, it's been allowed to show its face? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it's been amazing to watch. Well, let's go and have a look at your setup. Okay. Um, I'm really keen to see how you strip grazing your animals because you've got sheep here as well. Yes. And a lot of people talk about electric fences and sheep being problematic. Um, but you've got an electric fence set up that actually works really well in controlling those sheep as well as the cattle. Yes. Um, and I can't wait to go and see the results. Cool. So Eliza, this I suppose is the hero of the story, this fencing system that you've got here because it's allowing you to break up all of these paddocks and introduce really good grazing practices and get your grasses back. You've got the S200 from Gallagher which is a pretty big unit. Um, that was the one that was recommended to you for this situation? Yeah, uh, so a bigger one was basically to 
make sure we get uh, the energy right out to the ends of the lines because we are splitting up pretty big paddocks uh, yep. with multiple lines. So that means we've got more kilometres worth of, of line. And you're running sheep. Yes. Um, so one of the other secrets in this is that your centre line is actually an earth, it's not a hot wire. Yes, that's right. Yeah, so, so no matter whether the sheep go over the top or underneath, they're going to get a really well earthed belt. Yes. Because your soil's pretty bad at conducting electricity, isn't it? During summertime, yeah. So yeah. it's dry, it's uh, not going to, um, yeah, conduct the electricity to connect the pulse. I have a number of people ask me about strip grazing sheep with electric. There are some pretty good tips. What are your learnings from using the system a year in? What would you do? Yeah, so with sheep, uh, during winter, two, two hot wires really uh, worked well. Uh, yeah. During summer, the third has really made sure that... Um, the third we're earth not, wire. The, with yeah. the earth, yeah. yeah right. So we're not missing... Um, yeah, one's going over the top or underneath. They're yep. getting touched by both the earth and the hot wire. And also shearing, um, connecting them with the, or introducing them to the hot wire after shearing. So they haven't got that insulation layer. So when you first enables. introduce your sheep, your hot tip is have your sheep shorn yes. before you introduce the electric fencing yes. system. And then that's an education thing, isn't it? Yeah, so they know now that it is hot and they won't um, yeah, disrespect the, the, um, the hot wire uh, when they do have wool. Something else I'm really, really fascinated with and I think it's fantastic. Now, ideally you would separate out your dams and have troughs. You wouldn't allow your stock in the dams. You're Correct. not at that point yet. Yes. You can actually stretch this across the dam quite easily. Yeah, that's right. And so you're limiting access to the dam bank as well as the paddock so you're not leaving this central overflogged section of ground in the middle of your paddock yes that's right all of the things right there so i suppose the big take home out of this is electric fences can be a really simple and cost effective way of breaking up your paddocks and strip grazing they can be used with sheep provided that you use a large enough energizer yes um, and think about your dams the same as your paddocks and break them up too yeah well, I guess the proof's in, isn't it, Eliza? Look at this Phalaris we got here. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing. amazing what happens when you leave a paddock to rest yeah. and then you graze it intensively and let it rest. Yeah, that's it. The proof's in the pudding, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. We've t turned it around. So really, this is a story of three things, isn't it? It's high-tech fencing, so using the latest in technology, but also looking at the environment and looking to the environment seeing what's there already yeah. and where you can bring it back to and then using really sensible farming practices that allow the earth to rest and allow the animals to be used to fertilize the ground rather than deplete it yeah what a fantastic story eliza well done thanks guys if you like this kind of content don't forget hit the subscribe button give it a thumbs up and there's plenty more like this on timthompson.ag I'll have links to the setup that they're using for their fencing in the description below.